This is an Axopar 37 Mark II. Cross cabin, what's interesting about that, you might say. We've tested this boat a couple of times, in fact, but we're not here because of the boat, nice as it is. We're here because of what's on the transom. And that is a pair of 300 horsepower twin turbo V8 diesel outboards from Cox Powertrains. And we're gonna see what they're like. The engines are large, but then so are the numbers. 4.4 litres, eight cylinders, 300 horsepower, and 600 newton metres of torque. They weigh 393 kilograms, 116 kilograms more than a Mercury Verado 300 V8, and the unit cost is 45,000 pounds. With the lids off, it's clear what a brilliant job Cox has done with packaging these engines. The motor, developed from scratch for this purpose, has a vertical drive shaft that connects to a 90 degree transfer case built to manage all that lovely torque produced by the twin turbos that are tucked neatly down each side of the engine. Now this is an interesting test for me. Uh, Hugo, the editor, tested a prototype of this engine, a single installation on a rib, and if you want to watch that video, I'll put a link and a banner up there and down below the video. I haven't been following the process of this engine as closely as he has, but I have a lot of experience of this boat with the petrol engines, the 300 V8s and the 350s. So for me, it's really interesting to see what these engines are like on a boat that I know really well. You know, if you're gonna make this a production engine for boats like this, how does it perform? How does it feel around the marina? What's it like to interact with? And of course, we'll go into the numbers as well, but I'm really interested to see, just cold for me coming into this, what these things are like to use day to day. Now, the aesthetics of outboards are getting more and more important because they're being fitted to boats that look as cool as, as this. And there's no escaping the fact that these are big old units. You know, they're much bigger on the transom than the equivalent Mercury Yamaha unit for example, but they look good and they certainly suit this boat really well. So here we are at the helm and there's no physical key. We've got the, the Cox branded Coast Key wireless kill cord here. So that's wearable kill cord, which means that you can move around the boat. But if you go into the water, it senses that and, and cuts the engine. So the start is just a push button. There's one engine after the other. And there you go, that's as our idle. The engine settled down to you know, you know they're there, it's louder than a petrol, but it's not offensively loud anyway. And then you have the Cox software here, so you have your engine readout, it's mirrored, so you have the, the Cox stuff here, and then you have it also coming through the MFT up here, that sort of basic engine information. This is all Cox branded, you get your full fuel flow, you get fuel level, you've got warning lights here, RPM obviously. It's not as configurable as, say, Mercury's vessel view, and you can have different screen sizes. You can have four inch, eight inch, which is this one is, you can have 12 inch, and they will also do a glass bridge version. Obviously this looks a little bit clunky compared to the lovely Simrad glass bridge that, that fits beautifully inside the dash, but that is an option going forward. But that aside, it's sort of business as usual as it comes to, to working with an outboard. So here we are out in a very, very murky solar. Visibility is absolutely terrible. So we're having to take it very easy. Hopefully later on we'll be able to get out and and up the speed and get a full set of figures. But for now, I was just gonna get a feel for it because as I said, I'm, I'm coming into this completely cold. I don't have experience of this engine. I've tested this exact boat with a variety of petrol outboards. So it's gonna be an interesting comparison. We're idling right now at 800 RPM and you may be picking this up through the mic, I don't know, but there's certainly more resonance than you'd get from a petrol 300 horsepower outboard. We've got the fuel pumps actually inside the cabin here on this boat, which won't be the case on, on future production installations. So you can just hear them hissing away in the background. Actually, you can hear them more than the engines. I actually can't really hear the engines themselves at the moment. Obviously, we've got the door shut and the sunroof shut, but all you can really hear is the fuel pumps. But there's just a bit more resonance than you get on the petrols. Anyway, let's go into gear. Got Dometic fly-by-wire throttle. It's lovely and smooth. It's a very positive engage into gear and then you can hear the engines and that is more noticeable than on a petrol engine there's no doubt about that but it's not disruptive it's not terrible it's sort of what you'd expect you know you've got you know 300 horsepower twin turbo v8 diesels on the back there is going to be a little bit more disturbance than the equivalent petrols so we'll ease her up lovely and smooth throttle action anyway steering's nice and light as well this, this side of things doesn't really feel any different to the equivalent Mercury's. It's a, it's a nice throttle action and, and lovely light steering. So that's 13 knots and I think that is about planing. So we're just about planing there, 13, uh, 15 knots now, burning 56 litres an hour. 
that's combined. So these fuel figures I'm giving you are combined uh, both engines. So 50 litres an hour at 17 knots now. Up we go, 20 knots. And I'm not going to be able to go much faster than this. It's just too risky. So as I said, later on, hopefully we'll be able to come out and, and get some more figures. But that's 20 knots. So that's your sort of slowest, fast cruising speed, so to speak. Properly on the plane now. And there's a bit of a drone. There's just a little bit of a bit of a drone in the background, more noticeable than on the on the petrols. But again, it's perfectly manageable. And we're doing 65 litres an hour. Now we're doing 23 knots. 65 litres an hour for both engines. 600 horsepower back there, over 600 newton metres of torque. Twin turbo V8. And 65 litres an hour for both for both engines. And now we're up to 25 knots. And in terms of feel, it feels very, very similar to the outboards with petrol. Um, you know, in terms of a boat to drive, this is actually part of the 37 that I've, I've driven plenty of times. Feels identical in terms of throttle feel, steering. Feels as good as it always does on an Axo Par 37. Initial impressions are, it's slightly noisier, but not terribly so. I'll learn more when I can actually get it up through the rev range, which unfortunately, we can't do at the moment. So let's head into the marina and see what it's like at slow speed. So here at slow speed, what really stands out is the positivity of in and out of gear. You get a nice sort of reassuring thunk, both from the throttles and the engines that tell you you've definitely slipped it into gear. Which personally I quite like, because it means you get a nice bit of momentum when you're doing this sort of stuff. You do hear the engines more in and out of gear than you would on a petrol. But you know, I don't really mind that. I quite like knowing that they're you know, doing what you want them to do. And for all intents and purposes, it handles just as you'd expect a Axle Par 37 to do at slow speed. Steering is lovely and light, so you can swing the engines around nice and quickly. There we go. Right, the conditions have improved a bit. It's still not great, but there's, there's enough visibility that we can open her up a bit and see what she's like at higher speeds. Now we'll crunch the numbers and we'll compare them to a 300 horsepower petrol outboard and I'll put a slate up that you can then pause and have a good look at the numbers rather than me rambling on about them right now. We'll sort of give you some headline figures, but we'll put them up so that you can have a proper look. Anyway, here we are, 20 knots, which is where we got to earlier, so we'll... Now uh, we're rattling along at 30 knots now, and this is the speed where this boat feels really comfortable. This is where most people, I would say, will do most of their cruising. So 30, 32 knots, that equates to about 3,500 RPM. And the combined consumption of both engines is in the region of 80 litres per hour. And we've got the door open now, just to get a bit of fresh air in. But honestly, this is the point where the engines have sort of melted into the background. This is where I think you least notice the difference between them and the petrols. The, the, the most noticeable time is, is at idle and when you're in the marina. When you're out here, honestly, I really don't think there's a huge amount in it. Let's wind her out and see what we can get. So there's plenty of shove on tap, it really is instantaneous. It's really gutsy performance. And I think it would really come into its own if you're in a sort of a big heaving swell, having all that torque on tap would be really helpful. Okay, that's now 40 knots. I haven't really touched the trim, it trims really nicely. Yeah, it trims pretty low really. That's 40 knots now, still feels perfectly comfortable. And let's just see if we've got, okay, so that's now wide open throttle, 4,000 RPM and 39.5 knots. We're going against the tide. We did see 
42 knots going the other way earlier. So top speed is down on the petrol versions. But if you think about where this boat's going to live, which for most people will be that 30 to 35 knot band, then that's where you're going to see the benefits. And that's where you know it feels perfectly comfortable when it comes to cruising. And the nice thing about it is it doesn't detract from certainly the way this boat handles. You know, you've still got that agility, you've still got that lovely travel across the water where it needs very little trim. It's sort of tabletop flat and it just hoovers up the chop. It doesn't affect any of that. Hats off to the engineers at Cox for creating a diesel motor that can stand toe to toe with such established offerings from the petrol brigade. This is only the beginning of the challenge though, because to really take the leisure market by storm, Cox is going to have to prove that its distribution and servicing network is as robust as its engines seem to be. Mechanically, the Cox CX-0300 is a triumph, but to be a world beater, these other important elements of outboard ownership need to be just as accomplished. Thank you for watching our review of the Cox CX-0300. Please give the video a like if you enjoyed it and remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're alerted every time we upload a new video.